Listen to me now. Oh my God. Actually, three things, right? So the first thing is basically balance or postural orientation, like right. basically to limiting the thing about your balance life. Okay. Like for example, say you're working on a roof, right? You don't want the tile work you're doing with your hands to completely move your body around. So right. you have to maintain that postural orientation. Right. But if you are standing, that's a bit easier for people to understand because then they think that you have to maintain your balance, right? Mm. But it's not really balance per se. It is balance is a part of overall postural orientation right. because people want your posture to be stable, right? And secure. So you're not going to fall off the tree when you're picking a fruit. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Yep. Right? Yeah. So that, so that is one condition that you're always trying to maintain, right? The second condition that we want is actually to generate power, right? Because everything requires some level of power, right? right. Now, the third thing which comes out of the interaction between these two is actually movement patterns, right? Because you have to get to the thing that you have to apply power to, right? So those are the three things, right? Generally speaking, by default, postural orientation becomes a priority because that is the first thing that relates to safety, right? Right, totally. We don't learn to throw ourselves at things, literally. We don't hurl ourselves at things, right? So the postural orientation becomes the most important thing. And the right? second thing, it becomes the movement to reach the object that we need to. And the third thing is the power that we need to generate to do whatever the objective, right? Right. So in terms of postural orientation, right, we right. have evolved these things which call anticipatory postural adjustments. If right. your mind perceives a high, even not that something is happening, but even a heightened sense of alertness or awareness of a certain segment of space around you, your body automatically takes a series of anticipatory postural adjustments to be better primed or prepared right. to deal with anything coming from that direction. Right. Or anything that is at that direction, right? Yep. And these anticipatory postural adjustments are completely unconscious. Right. For most people, right? Yep. And, and internal arts operate heavily using and exploiting these anticipatory postural adjustments, right? Yep, totally. So, so, so the stuff that we were working on in terms of releasing your body with respect to the softening of the visual field on your left eye, say, for example, right? Mm -hmm. What that is basically working on is effectively by softening the gaze it is letting go of overuse to the point which it has become pathological and dissipatory postural adjustment okay. at that level, right? So, so now the thing with anticipatory postural adjustments is that like people who are capable of very fine movement <clears throat> has very highly developed repertoire of granular anticipatory postural adjustments where people who are not used to fine movement, fine precise movement, at speed, for example, then the anticipatory postural adjustments are a little rough around the edges, right? Yeah. Because it operates even at an unconscious level, most of the time, if you can track someone's anticipatory postural adjustments, you know what they're going to do even before they know they want to do it. Totally, yep. yep. Like anticipatory postural adjustments, generally, the most primary ones are organized around the greatest structural support you have, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So when you're standing, that That's is it. the musculature of the top yeah, of the center yeah, yeah. of the arch, right? So, yeah. so if you are tracking the changes in someone's <clears throat> center of the arch, right? The top of the arch, then you know what they're going to do even before they're going to do it consciously because you see even before they consciously decide to do it or experience them doing it, yep. 
because you can read the changes yeah. there, right? You can As touch, an example, if someone's standing, yeah. right? You can touch their process. Now, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So now the trick is how do you identify and harmonize with these anticipatory structural adjustments, right? Mm -hmm. To prepare for what he's doing. So even he does it, you're already responding to it. That's why we say you're already there. You can't be faster than already there. Right, right? yeah, yeah, right, yeah. So, First to arrive. So now, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now how do you do it? Now the trick is, right, we don't have we don't have lidar, radar, or any kind of remote sensing technologies of that caliber <laughs> that allows us to see what happens in that another human being's body, right? So I mean, obviously, we have visual input based on our internal model. We can make speculations, right? That's how we know what someone is doing by seeing, right? But beyond that, through touch, for example, we don't have a mechanism to feel inside someone else's body, right? All we have is when someone is trying to affect us through touch, there's a very complex set of force vectors and torques that gets applied to our body, right? And our neuromuscular control systems uses the internal model they have of the other person with applying force to calculate the necessary force vectors across all our joints and musculature to do whatever that the objective is going to be based on that input, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the way we feel what someone else is doing is by feeling those compensatory adjustments that happen in our body, right, in line with our expectation based on the complexity of force vectors they're applying, right? Mm -hmm. So we can only feel the changes in our body, not their body, right? Right. So this is why the stiffer you are, the less you feel, because the less of your body can change because you're stiff. Right. Yep. The more change the body is capable of, the more resolution you will have, the more bandwidth data stream you will have, that the models can use to speculate what the other guy is doing. Yeah, higher degrees right? of freedom. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Totally. Yeah. So now when you connect with your son, what I did notice was that your feet were not changing enough, right? Okay. For you to be able to harmonize with the changes in his legs or feet. Okay. So you were responding to his upper body, right? Where the there's a lot more intentional movement. Okay. So if you were to be able to sum or perform the integration function more thoroughly mm -hmm. and more fluidly within yourself and pay more attention to the changes in your own feet and your leg, okay. you will be able to harmonize with your yes, son's legs and feet better and you will, you, you will be able to track and respond to those anticipatory postural adjustments much better so that he will be affected much better. The degree of harmonization is that <clears throat> any subtle APA change in this, if he's standing on the center of his foot or his arch, right? The optitude of the arch, you compensate for it using your integration function immediately. So by the time that he actually performs a function, you're already there. There's yeah. nowhere for him to go. Yeah, right? He needs to be on a hair trigger. Okay. So, Yep. So basically, the, you and him, the systems become so tightly coupled, right? So this is, this is in, in, in traditional terms, this means you have a very good join, right? Yep. So the systems become so tightly integrated that you, you, you respond to him even before he knows he's going to do something, right? Okay. It's making sense. Mm -hmm. Consciously, right? Yep. Now, the second thing is that you, you can follow those APAs, right, and block him and direct him in any way he want, you want without him being conscious. Because APAs are mostly an unconscious process. So yep. you can influence his APAs in a way that is, currently, that is counterproductive to his goals. Yeah. So this is how you take people, like when Adam says, you know, touch their feet, yeah. that's what's happening, right? Yeah. 
you are tightly coupling with the changes in their feet and responding to the changes in their feet so that their ability to successfully perform all the high level movement functions are robbed of them. So in, no, in, so in the process of doing the high level movement functions, they end up throwing themselves off balance because you're basically blocking the, the effect of the APA, right? Mm -hmm. So this is why basically Adam said, like, touch your feet, touch your feet, touch your feet, right? Yeah. Like, like the Mac Mac Dojo life asshole was like basically joking about it, insinuating that Adam might have a foot fetish or whatever, right? Which is retarded. <laughs> Saw that, yeah. I mean, These guys yeah, are freaking. I mean, first of all, it's stupid, but second of all, you know, I mean, you know, there, there's nothing, there's nothing unholy about a foot fetish. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, <laughs> hey, I, don't, I don't kink shame nobody, bro. Come on now. Exactly <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so when you're working with your son, you have to make your integration function comprehensive and fluid to the point where your changes that happen in the soft tissue of the arches are responding very, very closely to the anticipatory postural adjustments that are taking place in his inside his feet. Yep. This is how you take someone's balance away, right? Okay. okay. This is not the same process as uprooting, but it's a process that is specifically referred to as cutting the root, right? Mm -hmm. So the process of uprooting is effectively disconnecting the upper and lower bodies of a person by manipulating your spine in a very specific way. So that is built on top of this. Oh. So in terms of what you're working on, the up, the elastic upward pull of the arches that you're resting into, that you're resting every perceivable part of your body that is affected by the gravity into, that is directly related to that spinal condition, which is called GA gene or uprooting gene in Tai Chi Chuan, right? So you need the to rest onto the upward pull of the arch to have the uprooting, right? But to cut the root, <clears throat> you need to be constantly organizing around the top of the arch in a way that is very much tightly harmonizing with the anticipatory postural adjustments in the other person's feet. Okay. And you're using the APA and uh, anticipatory postural adjustment, I don't want to say analogy, but are you are you kind of grouping in compensatory postural adjustments with that when you when you often say APAs? Because CPAs are slightly different, right? APA is something that yeah. you're anticipating, right? And comp compensatory is kind of the same, but it could yeah. be like a... Anyway, go ahead. A CPA is a correction, right? So you have the APAs that gives you a foundation to work with, yeah. right? Then you have your primary movement patterns. Yep. And CPAs compensate for any error in the primary movement patterns. Yep. <laughs> yep. Right? Okay, yep. But the difference is with the internal arts, with the yin aspect of your structure, I mean, obviously, yin and yang principle applies across the whole range of facets, right? Yep. But the yin aspect of your your being, like, say, for example, the torso system, right? Right, I was just thinking about it, yeah, for the last few minutes. Yeah, it's because you're not making those active movement patterns that we call brute force or lee, like conventional movement patterns, right? Yeah. So you, you, your movement, your, your adjustments are on your part are mostly like basically APAs to give you to be already there and CPAs to follow him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's kind of my current understanding of how it all ties together with um, neuromuscular control understanding that we have today. Uh -huh. Fucking A. I mean, of, I mean, of course, we are, we are talking about it at one level, right? I mean, you can yeah. go to a higher level of... Oh harmonization or integration and speak or speak on basis of yi or chi, right? right Which is yeah. perfectly fine. Oh, I believe it. But I'm talking about the pure physical substrate level and yeah. the aspect we are looking at it through neuromuscular control theory. Yeah. This is how it all ties up. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense, man. Thank perfect. Thank you for that. No worries. Send me the